you have a prepaid call from an inmate at Hill, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for you. What up, bro? What's going on? Uh, what I'd like to do, first off, I'd like to get to the people that are the youngsters, like you said. That's what I really want to do. But what I really want to do is be able to help other people out. You know so what do you go by? I, uh, I want my uh, Tango. In my neighborhood, I want my Tango. What's your nationality? I'm white and Indian. Were you ever part of any gangs, prison gangs, groups, or or organizations? Yes. I'm a brother born in Daniel. Where you from out here in the streets, bro? Uh, West Sacramento. What made you join? Uh, I see it as a family thing. I could also make money. Protection, a little bit of everything. What are you convicted of? A voluntary manslaughter. How long is your sentence? Uh, I got eight months left on it, so it was about 17 years. When you first got sentenced, how you feel about it? And we, and when you first went to prison, hit the main line. What was your mentality? My mentality was to, sh you know, I mean, to prove to the big homies that I was worthy of carry carrying on the cause, and you know, I mean, I was faithful to my people. My my feelings were scared, too. You know, I didn't know what to expect. You know, I hit Tracy and Tracy. I mean, my dad was in Tracy back in the 70s. And I remember stories he was telling me. So I was like, man. What exactly was your position within the organization? Uh, I got up to pro. Uh, I started out, you know what I mean, little surface jobs, uh, uh, a YS, TS, yard security. And then I got up to, you know what I mean, uh, uh, overall in OA. What are the rules and regulations of the organization? Oh, there's a lot of rules and regulations. All the state, all of them would be here all day. But mainly, I mean, follow your guidelines and rules. You know what I mean? Stay true to your people and just don't snitch. What constitutes an individual being removed from the yard? Telling, uh, not doing what he's told, uh, talking bad about another bro, uh, any sexual crimes they committed against women or children, uh, any form of communications with the cop that is not authorized by anybody, uh, all kinds of stuff. Who would be chosen to go conduct a removal, and what would happen to them if they refused? to go conduct a removal? Uh, they would be told kindly to step aside and then afterwards they would be removed themselves as well. What if they survive a removal? Where do they go from there? When they get removed, where do they go? Yeah, if they survive it. If they survive the hit, where, where would they go from there? They usually go S and Y, sensitive knees yard, or so, sometimes the dudes are hard enough to try to come back to the yard. I mean, I've seen that happen where they try to come back to the yard, but they just end up getting removed again. But well, usually they go ahead and why and protect the custody. Were you uh, ever a validated gang member? Yes. How did they validate you? What proof and evidence did they have to validate you? Uh, kite telling and self admission. Did you do an indeterminate shoe? Uh, I did it, yes, I did an indeterminate for about five years before they released me. 
atrophy. Why did they uh, put you in a in a term of shoe? Uh, I caught. I did a removal on an officer. One of the officers. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. One of the officers was was making it real hard for the homies to do what they did. So I got put in line to do a removal on an officer. I did it, and that got me into being validated as five and a half years in Gatsby Shoe. What exactly did they value you as? What 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 prison gang? What organization did they value you as? Uh, North Daniel. Northern structure. What do you have to say to the youngsters out here that's involved in gang activity or thinking about joining it's gangs? Not, it's not working, man. It's a lot of trouble, a lot of hassle, and in the end, you're always wrong and you're going to get removed no matter what. I mean, there's always going to be somebody bigger and badder than you. I mean, it never works out. No matter how faithful you are to your clique, to your hood, to your family, if you call them your family, no matter what it is, they're always going to play you in the end. They don't get what they want. It's not worth it. Okay, for the individuals out there that, um, um, they're out there, bro, committing petty crimes and, uh, you know, maybe got a light sentence a year or two or whatnot, a few years, a short term, um, and they land in prison, would, would, would that be a guarantee that they would get out of prison on their release date? No. No, definitely not. You're not getting out of the release date. Can you uh, elaborate why or how? Well, you get in, you're going to be a new homie on the yard. You say you got a few years in, right? They see you as somebody, hey, you ain't put in work. You need to do this. You need to prove you're worthy of carrying your hood name, your logo. You got to earn your stripes. And what comes along with earning your stripes and earning your hood logo? Put in work. 115, you're going to get time. You know what I mean? You, you, you smash a dude, you break his jaw, and he goes down, there's a GBI. There's five five more years. Right? You get angry at the system. You put in work, or you mad at the cop, you hit him. There's, there's two strikes right there. You're going to life sentence. It's not worth it. Okay, let me ask you this, bro. Um, I know there's yeah. individuals up in there in, in, in pretty much every car, right? That, you know, um, yeah. say they're Christian and, you know, and all that stuff, bro. And, uh, you know what I mean, but you know what I mean, but they, you know I me. Mean? Of course, they got to run with their people, regardless of what uh, yeah. if they're Christian or not, or what religion they are, bro. And they use that as yeah. an excuse. You feel me to um to get a, to not do things. Now let me ask you this. Yeah. I mean, uh, people that are non-affiliate in there. Let me ask you this. Um, like what what like this? What's their obligation, bro? What's their obligation? You know, can they, can they get out of this stuff? Yeah, okay, the, okay, if you're a resident, right, that's when you're not, you're from somewhere, but you don't gangbang, you're called a resident, right? You have to ride with the car, you usually be left alone most of the time, because you're not actually part of the clique, but when it comes down to like getting into a riot or something that involves everybody of that race, you have to participate. If you don't, you will be removed. So let me ask you this, man. When when I was uh when I was up in there, right? Um, yeah. I seen like uh people that were uh you know I mean uh Christian and uh and whatnot or or or, or a certain religion, right? That they wasn't yeah. gang affiliated. They wasn't from any type of hood or any type of gang, right? Now let me tell you yeah. this, bro. I seen these individuals get molly whopped and get uh get jumped or yeah. whatnot because they wasn't affiliated yeah. in a particular gang. Now tell me. Yeah. Like, did you see that happen, like, with, within your movement or within the Nathaniels? Can, can you, can you like, tell that story or elaborate on that one? Yeah, I got, uh, there was a dude, we called him Chino, he from Swing Valley. And he came in, basically resident, he said, hey, I'm Christian, I don't look for trouble, I don't find trouble. And the big homies told him, like, oh, let's look, if the guy isn't going to help our cause, there's no reason for him to be on the yard. So they took four youngsters sent him on this dude and they beat him to a pulp just because he wanted to follow God instead of being part of a movement. I mean, it was wrong. Yeah, so um, 
you know, the audience so people will know, man, you go to prison, bro, um, it don't matter, you, you know what I mean, you know, we're going by what race you are and stuff like that, right, and what gang yeah. you are, and you go in there and you say yeah. you're not from a gang, you ain't with, you ain't down with that, man, that ain't going to work up in the penitentiary. Matter of fact, you're, yeah. you know, especially in the level three, level four you are, you, you're probably going to be prayed that, that that's not a good thing. You know what I mean? Not from, from being a gang. I'm just saying you don't have, I'm, I'm, I'm not promoting gangs, but I'm saying that, you know what yeah. I mean, there's no way out. When you, when you go in, in prison no. system, man, there's no way out at all. You got to put in work regardless, correct? Regardless. Yep, regardless. You're going to be asked to do something. Some of the time it doesn't matter if you're worshiping God or anything. You're going to be asked to put in work. There's, no, there's nothing there to save you. And ain't the cops ain't going to save you. That's one thing they're not going to do. The cops... The more violence, the higher their pay. The more they get paid. And um, if they if, if they go be uh, if they go do a mission, they agree to do a mission. Let me ask you this: yeah. Like some people want to fake it and, and and pretty much half-ass it. You know what I mean? That's not yeah. going to work, right? Can you tell me how that's not going to work? No. Yeah. Uh, right. Let's say if you get told to do a mission, you're all right. You give the guy a heads up, right? Say, hey, I'm an athlete, I'm going to remove you, and I'm going to put hands on you. And you go down easy, and I won't kick you. The homeboys are going to be watching you. You are told by your higher up to remove him until the mini is shot off. Okay? Now, either you're going to be doing damage to him, and you get shot with the mini, or not. You have to do damage. If you do not, they're going to do damage to you. When you come back out of a hole, they want to see a body report. They want to see the incident report and see how much damage you did to the body. If it doesn't show you did damage, then you didn't do your job. I mean, you're going to be put in the hat. You're going to be removed. Okay, bro, can you elaborate, like, uh, what circumstances and um, events occurred, like, you know, a little bit further on um, you making the decision to step out of the movement? Yeah. I got you. Uh... I was sitting in Tatch I was on my about uh, four and a half years into an indeterminate. And uh me and my, I was living on my celly, you know what I mean? Me and it was kicking it, I'm not gonna name him because he's still active. Uh we were doing our thing and then they asked me to remove somebody on the yard. We had group yard and it was my cousin and Chancey were asking me to remove from Modi, right? Casper from Modi. And I was like, damn, man. So I did give him a heads up. And I and me and him turned around and got off on the dudes that were asking us, asking me to get off on him. We ended up getting jumped real bad, going to the thing. And that was my final decision. I'm, doing, I'm not going to hurt my people. I'm done hurting my people. You know what I mean? I'm, all I've done in this movement is hurt my own people. You know what I mean? That's all I've done. So I, I, I said, I'm done. I'm not doing it no more. I dropped out. Do you agree? Couldn't do it no more. It's a lot of strain on the body. You have 60 seconds remaining. It's stressful and they're always on you. It's been a good conversation, brother. Okay, I appreciate that, brother. Do you have any final words to say before... Uh, this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Do you have any final words to say, bro, before this cuts off? Yeah. Please, don't, don't join the gangs. And if you're in one, just... Step, step aside and let some other fool take the job, man. It's not your, your job to be the mean guy. You know? Take life seriously. 